Hello, my name is Captain Kelly Muniz, Commanding Officer of Media Relations Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Newton Division in the city of Los Angeles on January 19th, 2024 at around 12.40 p.m. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you can have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know right now. The LAPD conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We are still at the very early stages of this investigation, which can often take up to a year to complete, and our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies in the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution. The images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Olympic Patrol Division officers were in the area of Raymond Avenue and Washington Boulevard when they saw a white Dodge Ram pickup parked nearby. As the officers drove past the Dodge truck, they conducted a vehicle query on the license plate. Their query revealed that the Dodge Ram pickup truck had been reported stolen earlier in the day and the owner had left a firearm inside of the truck. When the officers returned to conduct a recovery of the parked, stolen Dodge truck, they saw the truck traveling nearby. The officers began to follow the truck, verified the license plate, and advised Communications Division that they were following a stolen vehicle. The officers requested the assistance of an air unit, additional patrol units, and a supervisor. Here is the corresponding radio broadcast. Can you show us following a code 37 vehicle westbound, correction, eastbound Washington from Raymond? It's going to be a ram. I suspect it's going to be. I need a backup there. Should be my supervisor. In the vicinity, 2033, backup supervisor following a code 37 eastbound Washington from Raymond to Dodge Ram. There's going to be a one handgun inside the vehicle that was reported as well. We're still going eastbound Washington on Vermont. Stop them to try light. 2833, stop them to try light eastbound Washington at Vermont. There's a stolen handgun inside of the vehicle as well. Upon the arrival of an air unit and additional patrol units, the officers attempted to conduct a vehicle stop on the Dodge truck. The driver, however, refused to stop and eventually entered the westbound 10 freeway. The driver of the Dodge truck was later identified as Mario Alvaranga. The officers activated their police vehicle's emergency lights and siren and initiated a vehicle pursuit. Alvaranga initially drove away at a moderate speed with his hazard lights illuminated. Upon exiting the freeway on Western Avenue, he ran a red-phased tri-light at the intersection and entered the westbound 10 freeway once more. Alvaranga accelerated away at a high rate of speed and ultimately exited the freeway at Crenshaw Boulevard. As the vehicle pursuit entered Southwest Division, Alvaranga continued driving at a high rate of speed and committed numerous traffic violations, resulting in the air unit taking over the pursuit in tracking mode. After tracking the Dodge truck for several minutes, Southwest Patrol officers took over the pursuit. As Alvaranga entered Newton Division, he lost control of the Dodge truck and collided with a parked vehicle at 12th Street and Paloma Street. Following the collision, Alvaranga emerged from the Dodge truck and ran away from the officers and into an occupied warehouse in the 1100 block of East Pico Boulevard. The pursuing officers followed Alvaranga into the warehouse and while inside, Alvaranga stopped faced the officers, and produced a handgun, resulting in an officer-involved shooting. Alvaranga was struck by gunfire, dropped the handgun, and fell to the ground. He was then taken into custody without further incident. A portion of this incident was captured on the responding officer's digital and car video.
Most marked vehicles assigned to patrol have a camera mounted inside, which activates when the emergency lights are turned on. The camera can also be manually activated. These digital in-car cameras have a buffer of video without audio. Upon activation, the camera goes back one minute and starts recording. Here is digital in-car video from the officers involved in this incident. They got the, for the gun, right? They for got the, the gun. gun. Uh, yeah, the gun with they, the gun, they, yeah. They got the uh, that info? Yeah, they did. They did. See you got playing back on. Southbound Vermont from Washington. Hey, let's get up before if he tries to get on the freeway, we'll light him up. Very deep overhead for three units total as well. Uh, Southbound Vermont. Let's try to light him up right now. Uh, let's try to light him up, yeah. Hey, airship, since you're, uh, since you're up with us, I'm going to try to light him up, sir. Okay. Copy that. Control the shelf now. Down in the portion. Let's go in the field. Yes, we're heading southbound. Vermont towards the turn freeway. 33. We have lights. He's refusing to stop. Oh, wait. Lights uh, on. Lights are going on. He's putting on the emergency lights. Turn the lights on, so we'll give him a chance to go to uh, Normandy. Down, down, from Is he gonna stop? Or we'll give it a second because he has his hazards on, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, we're in pursuit. Westbound. Westbound 10 freeway. I see what I'm doing. Westbound 10 freeway. Playing as an off frequency, stand by 230, pursuit code 37, is westbound 10 freeway from Vermont. This is back at 30 Reservoir. Tell them we're getting ready to exit on the. Uh, we are available for tracking. And uh, still westbound. If, if he takes off on here, then we'll go to tracking. Just advice if he takes off from here, we'll go into tracking. Exiting at Arlington at slow speed. Exiting at exiting at Arlington. Be advised, he just turned on his emergency lights back on, so I don't know if he's gonna stop or not. Twenty thirty-three is exiting Arlington in the ten freeway. The unit has the vehicles on the emergency lights, possibly stopping. Air key vehicle slowing down for traffic. And uh, stopped at the red light at Arlington. No, he's taking out. And he's uh, squeezing between vehicles here. Still slow speed. And looks like southbound Arlington from the 10. Not a disregard. Staying on the 10 freeway at Arlington. Westbound and speeding up now. Hey, I should be advised. There's a uh, stolen gun in the vehicle. We'll go to tracking. Uh, we'll go on to tracking. Uh, by CHP. Uh, repeat, uh, uh, the original information, copy you want to track. Uh, vehicle is still on the 10 freeway, so guys, just give them, if you want to track, give us a little bit of space, and uh, we'll keep an eye on the CHP. Still uh, westbound at a high rate of speed now on the 10 freeway. By CHP. 33, can you also advise CHP? I think it's like over the pursuit for us. Okay, copy. Did you say there's a handgun in the vehicle? Roger. 33, Roger, sir. There's a stolen handgun in the vehicle that was reported as well. Okay, so uh, supervisor, this uh, going to be OIC on this. Do you want to track, or do you want to continue, uh, or do you want to continue with the pursuit? How far does it uh, continue if there's fire inside the vehicle? Also, on the occupants for that. Okay, copy. Off it, off it, Crenshaw. Off it, Crenshaw. We are not tracking. So guys, go ahead and keep up with it. Southbound, Crenshaw. I'll try and get a look if we have any people in it. Thirty-three, Roger, sir. Stay in the car, stay in the car, stay in the car. Stay in the car. Yeah, I'm going to be going to be running southbound. 
and I'm going to have officers uh, chase it. It looks like a male Hispanic, black hat, black sweatshirt, and uh, running inside a building down by the street. Three four stop. Three four stop. Three eight four stop. Three eight four. Come back. Two buildings west. You. You ran into that building, and uh, officers ran in there. He might be coming out. Two buildings west of you on the north side of the street. A portion of this incident was also captured on the responding officer's body-worn video. Body-worn video cameras are used by most officers assigned to field duties. They are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera prohibits viewers from seeing everything the officers saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn video cameras have a buffer of video without audio from the previous two minutes prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. Here is body-worn video from the officers involved in this incident. Hey, Sasha! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right now! You're gonna get shot! Get Hurry up, hurry up. I can't breathe. Hold on. There. You can't breathe because you got hit. Oh. Yeah, put him on his left side. Uh, my left side, that's the wrong this side. This side, this side, come on. Oh. Oh, that hurts more. Alright, do we got the... Oh. Got the exit here. Oh, yeah. maybe straight. Straight, straight. Straight, please, straight. It hurts right no, here. You, you gotta stay right there, okay? Straight, I can't breathe like this. You can't breathe right there, you're on your side. I can't breathe like this. I can't breathe like this. Come on. You, you wanna sit up? Hey, man. Sit up, sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Just sit up real quick. Leave it like this or sit him up? Leave him like that. Leave him like this, alright? I can't breathe like this. I can't. No, he can't breathe because, because he's, he's got hit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Put him on the side. Uh, he's not going to stand Hey, dude, we're position. looking out for you. We're trying to save you, okay? You're going to have a hard time breathing like that, okay? That's, that's his holster. Hey, lay him on his side. All right, you got to go back to your side, dude. It's going to be the, it's gonna be the best optimal position. Uh, we don't want you to die, so we're uh, leave you on the side. Uh, no, 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 no. Just stay right there. That hurts, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts. That hurts. You got hurts. We weren't just going to stand, dude. You got shot, dude. We're trying to increase your best chance of survival. Yeah. You need to get onto your side. Uh, 
A portion of this incident was also captured by security footage from inside the warehouse. Los Angeles Fire Department paramedics responded and transported Alvaranga to a local hospital where he was treated by medical staff for the gunshot wounds he sustained during the incident. Investigators recovered the handgun produced by Alvaranga at scene and booked it as evidence. The handgun was not loaded. Alvaranga was arrested and absentee booked for grand theft of a firearm. On January 23, 2024, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office filed the following charges against Alvaranga, one count of brandishing a firearm at a police officer, one count of possession of a concealed firearm, one count of grand theft of a firearm, one count of felony evading, and one count of driving without the owner's consent. Mario Alvaranga is a 32-year-old resident of Los Angeles. As part of the investigatory process, a pursuit investigation was initiated. This pursuit investigation will be reviewed by the department upon completion for adherence to the law and department policy. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident. We will continue interviewing any new witnesses that may come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is complete, our Critical Incident Review Division will forward their findings to the Chief of Police, who will make his recommendation to the Civilian Board of Police Commissioners. The board will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics, drawing and exhibiting a weapon, and use of deadly force in this instance met the high standards expected of all Los Angeles police officers. If you would like more information on how the LAPD investigates all serious uses of force, Visit lapdonline.org where you can find the LAPD's use of force policy and procedure. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing.